All right, that Fan Fest on Saturday filled with fans, seeing players like Miguel Rojas, who's kind of joined us here on Sports Sunday. Miguel, thanks for coming on, first of all. It's good to have you. Second Definitely. of all, what was the reaction like from most fans? I mean, uh, this was a weird offseason with all the moves. I know the players, obviously, it must have been strange for you, too. But for the most part, what were fans saying to you yesterday? Well, uh, it was exciting. Uh, I think uh, everybody uh, understand the process. And uh, uh, a lot of the fans there, uh, they're just excited to, uh, to, to see all the new faces, I mean, yeah. to, to meet the people. And uh, uh, for them to be there and show up uh, shows a lot of uh, character of the, of the city because uh, they really want to support baseball and uh, they want to be around us. And uh, I feel like it was uh, pretty positive and uh, mm -hmm. I really like the atmosphere. You know the people that are going to go to Fan Fest, the people who support the team are going to love the Marlins no matter what they do. That's their team, they have pride. But the ones that, are, that may be a little skeptical or negative or wondering what's going on, what they say to you? What they want to talk to you about? Maybe if they mention stuff about what happened. Well, they uh, they they super sad about uh, the, the the movements that, that that we did because uh, there were a lot of uh, good players in, in this team. But uh, I mean, this is a process that uh, we're building from from down up, and uh, I think our farm system now have a lot of players that that can step up yeah. if something happened in the big league. Something that we miss a little bit in the in the past. That uh, uh, when something went down, like uh, somebody went down, like. We, we didn't have like that uh, depth that, in the farm system, yeah, yeah. That minor leaguers that that were ready to uh, play in the big leagues and uh, I feel like this is a great uh, opportunity for guys to show up the, that they're ready to play in the big leagues. So the bottom line you get here this is what it is you, like you said you have the farm system but when it's all going on in the off season, you're at home with your family and you get you know the call that man John Carlos gone then you know Marcel's gone Christian's gone D went earlier what are you thinking as all this is going on? Oh, it's, uh, it's pretty sad because uh, you know the guys as a, as a person and you're going to miss them and you're going to miss being around them because uh, I, I've been here for like four years now and I've been playing with them and uh, having a good relationship. But uh, at the end of the day, you're, you're a baseball player and you have to show up uh, the next year in spring training. It doesn't matter who's your teammate. You have to be ready to do your job and you have to... Uh, be ready to contribute with the team, mm -hmm. like whoever, is, uh, whoever you play for. So I think this is a business too. Baseball yeah. is a business and uh, people have to be ready to perform in the field, like when who, whoever you play for. The guy who played a long time in the league is Derek Cheater, who's now obviously one of your new bosses. Uh, Derek has gotten a lot of criticism in town uh, from media, from fans, some of it fair, some of it unfair. What, what have your, been your experience as, as whether you've met him yet or talked to him or what you've heard about the type of owner, the type of person he's going to be in the front office? Well, I'm pretty excited about having Jeter as my, uh, as my boss now because uh, uh, especially because uh, all the success he has on, on his career, I think he knows what he's doing. And I think he's uh, surrounding uh, of, of people who know what they're doing too. So uh, uh, baseball-wise, I think we're like pretty pretty complete. I think we have a pretty good uh, staff too. And I, I'm totally confident that, that what he's doing is the right thing. Now, this is going to be different for you. Regardless of wins or losses or what happens with this team, this 2018 team, you're going to be one of the veterans, the guys they look to, as opposed to before you were one of the guys in the mix. Now you're one of the few guys left. As a team, your expectations and how do you handle the fact you're going to have a lot of young players, a lot of guys going through this for the first time. How do you deal that as kind of a veteran player now and your expectations with this team? I'm really excited for them because this team is going to be dynamic. And uh, I, 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 I have the opportunity to... Uh, to be with these guys for a couple of weeks now. Uh, Brinson has been hitting with me. Monte Harrison, a guy we, we got from uh, uh, from the Brewers. And uh, there's a lot of talent there, man. Yeah. I, I can tell you they're ready to play. They're ready to uh, come to spring training and, and show what they can they can do for this team. And uh, I'm pretty excited for them because I remember in 2014, I got my opportunity to play in the big leagues. Now, four years for that uh, from that, I, I can tell all these guys going to have the opportunity, and I hope they uh, make the best of it. So your expectation for the season, you're not going to put, I know wins and losses is hard to talk about now. The team hasn't even come together yet, but your expectations, you think this team could be exciting, fun to watch, despite all the moves that have happened, not having G, not having these guys around? It's going to be exciting because, uh, like I said before, there's going to be a lot of guys having an opportunity, and that opportunity can make an, uh, an impact on, on, on the baseball side. We, uh, we have seen it. Like the, the Cubs went to the same, yeah, Astros, Astros yeah, went to the true. same, and now uh, it's our opportunity to show them the, the, that we can do it too. And uh, I, I think it's going to be positive. I'm, I'm going to spring training looking to win yeah. every day, like, like I always do, and I expecting the guys are coming ready to win too. Now, if, if you win, no matter how many games you win this year, every time, you, are you still going to keep the, the pie in the face, the, the, the shave of cream? Is that still going to stay a tradition? Because we saw the video throughout last season. It was always fun, the mask on, the pie in the face. You know, I think we know that you were pretty involved in that. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to keep, keep it fun. You're yes. going to keep it fun, keep yes. the tradition going. Well, hopefully you get some wins right at the start of the season. Now, now, 
he, since you're here today and, and you got a positive attitude and we're excited about the season, let's get the first one. The first win was Fan Fistle's win. So I've got, look, I got some shaving cream. All right, it's not, don't tell them it's cool. <laughs> don't tell them it's cool with whipped cream. This is the first pie in the face from Miguel Ross. I'll let him do it here on Sports. Like, for, oh, a lot of, for a lot of wins this year for, for the fish. For a lot of wins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's cold. <laughs> and that's good. I would shake your hand and just lick my fingers. <laughs> I'm just saying, Meg, I'm on a fist bump. That's what a fist bump it is yeah. to a good season. Miguel, thanks for, for coming season. on. Thanks, Keith. Thank you for having me. I hope a lot of uh, cream pies this year in the face, the whipped cream, <laughs> shaving cream for the month. Spring training gets underway next week in Jupiter. Miguel Rojas, one of the veterans, will be there. Clay, we'll send it back to you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. No,